the man, as Mark Followell said, that cannot miss. It is Daniel Gafford. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? We are doing fantastic, thanks in large part to you, and I very much appreciate yep, that. Yep. And I want to talk about the win, and I want to talk about the dunks and everything like that. But what I was curious about is this victory also, for the time being, moves y'all into the sixth spot, moves you away from the play-in. Is that something that gets discussed at all, or are you like, just stack, keep stacking up W's, and it'll take care of itself? I think the mentality behind that is to just keep moving forward. In all honesty, we have having fun with our success right now, so we're just trying to keep the keep the dice rolling. I would say, you know. So at the end of the day, the conversation about it is not really had. You know, we know that at the end of the day, we moved up, but you know, the work paid off for it. So we really just kind of, I would say, give ourselves a pat on the back and take that next step forward to go get this next one too. What's the what's been that difference between this stretch? You guys look like y'all are completely in sync defensively. Uh, on the offensive end, it looks like something we haven't seen in quite some time. What's been the difference in this stretch from whenever you all had that kind of bad spell? I mean, in all honesty, it's what Jason Kidd says that before every game, chemistry and trust. You know, we're out there, we're building something, and we're just having fun playing basketball together in all honesty. And at the end of the day, we trust each other on defense, well, on the defensive end and just in all honesty on the offensive end as well. You know, we got guys that gain a lot of attention with Kyrie and Luka, and those guys find each other and put trust in us to make sure we make the plays on the back end whenever, you know, they can't really do anything with two guys on them at the end of the day. I, I know, obviously, if y'all make the playoffs, this is something that everyone is used to and you'll eventually see. I was curious, are there any kind of particular challenges that come along with playing the same team back-to-back -back in the regular season? I mean, I know it's a different arena, and I know you've still got a few days, but your next game is against Utah again. Are there any challenges mm -hmm. with seeing the same team on back-to-back -back days? Uh, they always say in this league it's hard to beat the same team twice, in all honesty. That's what kind of like I've been taught ever since I've gotten into the league. So with that being said, we just have to come in and make sure we pay attention to detail like we did in the first game and kind of facilitate and do the things that we did for the win that we had here at home. So because I know for a fact that they're going to be in a position to where they adjust, they make the game plan different, and they try to throw different things at us down the stretch to where it's going to be something different that we see on the floor come Monday. So we just have to, I would say, pay attention to detail, lock into our game plan, and just be ready for anything in all honesty. Daniel, you and P.J. Washington getting traded at the deadline. I'm sure that throughout the history of the NBA, it can be tough to go to a new team in the middle of a season with limited practice, but you two guys have seemed to fit in very well. Can you talk about how it's been, uh, it looks like, an easy transition to a new team? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, the transition for both of us has been great, you know, from what I've talked about with him, he's just, you know, just, just another day, taking it one step at a time and not really trying to rush anything. When it comes with getting traded, you really can't rush anything because, you know, you, you get here the same day you get traded and you're, you're in a hotel, you can't really do anything, and now you have to get used to a whole different scheme, a whole different flow, a whole different, like I would say, uh, change of scenery, in all honesty, which, I mean, it worked out for both of us, you know, given the situation that we both were in. So you just, you know, taking it one step at a time is just kind of like what I always just think on with just getting traded, having just like that new, I would say, atmosphere that you would have to be around and getting used to new, <laughs> getting used to new faces and stuff, just being at certain teams for it's so long that we have been. Now, you know, all three of us were really excited, Daniel, when you got traded here. We were in Vegas for Super Bowl week, and we are all talking about it. We kind of had some ideas of what you would look like with us. We stopped talking about football yeah, we the did. Super Bowl Yeah, we this. did. And, but I, I even tweeted, <laughs> out, I tweeted out last night, I didn't expect this version. I didn't expect, like, this type of ceiling with you. And it looks like we might even have to, as I said, remodel that ceiling because it looks like there's even more to add to this. Did that expectation, <laughs> should we have expected it? Or is that is there something different working with this team that's allowing you to be this version of you? I mean, it's kind of like what I said off the first question. You know, there's just that chemistry that I've built here. In all honesty, you know, I try to make sure that in the past, I've always been that one guy that's always the odd man out because I'm more of a quiet guy. I'm an introverted guy, and I stay to myself most of the time. But I'm kind of actually like branching out, trying to reach out to guys, be able to just be that guy on the team that's, like willing to make the sacrifice of just like, you know, the awkward moments, the uncomfortable moments, coming out of my comfort zone and just kind of like being the teammate that I want to be. 
So that's kind of like something that I've always just wanted to work on throughout just my years of just being in the league. And I've gotten better over the years. But getting here, it's like it was a little bit more easier, I would say, because everybody came to me. Everybody was like, oh, if you need anything, let me know. Um, I always say D-Live was one of the first guys. He came up to me and he gave me pointers. He told me just – he pretty much just gave me the ropes, you know. Doing that at a young age, that was kind of like one of the first signs to see this, like, oh, yeah, this is this is going to be good for sure because, you know, you got guys actually just like taking that step in that leadership role, I would say, on in each aspect of the team, not necessarily just one person. It's more than just one person on this team that I would say took a step in that role. Do they also tell you off the court things to do? For example, have they told you to go to Nick and Sam's? <laughs> oh yeah, of course. That was like one of the first restaurants they told me to go to. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah, we were there one night. So we we were <laughs> yep. there doing a charity function the night that we thought we uh -huh. saw you, but that's your personal time. Didn't want to <laughs> invade, but I did want to get yeah. a breakdown. What what did you order, and how delicious was it? <laughs> Uh, I think it was my first time there, so I kind of I kind of kept it light, I would say. Um, I, I can't even remember. I think I got a New York trip at the time because I wanted to kind of get in and get out quick. I think I had a, a meeting with my financial advisor, <laughs> and we kind of ordered a bunch of it. We kind of ordered a bunch of everything too. We ordered a bunch of appetizers. We ordered the steaks. Uh, they came and showed us the crazy steaks that they named after Dirk and they named after Luca. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to be able to play the next day if I eat that. <laughs> tonight, so. Did they put the flashlight on it like that? Yeah, they gave me the. They gave us the whole just like little display and whole layout of everything that they had back there. It, 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 at the time, it was dope for sure. Like when family comes in or anything like that, that's the spot that we're gonna go to most definitely. But other than that, with just two people, I don't think either of us were gonna make it out that night. Yeah, it was. I, I think y'all played Phoenix the next night because I remember seeing uh, Eric Bledsoe there too. But you you walked in, and my co-host Mike he goes, "That's a tall guy," and I said, "That's <laughs> Daniel Gafford." <laughs> And you were wearing like this gold uh, suit, uh, track suit kind of thing. And I was like, I can yeah. wear that in this restaurant. And they said, no, he can wear that in this restaurant. <laughs> How would you describe that suit, by the way? <laughs> uh, it's, just, it's, a, um, it's a jumpsuit that I got from um, the Chicago spot when I was in Chicago. I still work with those guys a lot. They give me a lot of stuff, too. It's called Pillars. And mm -hmm. I, I love their track suits because, I mean, it's one of the track suits that I found. Um, at the time, well, jumpsuits at the time that fit me fully. So, I mean, you, I really can't complain. You know, they always take care of me, and I always make sure I take care of them on the back end. Daniel Gafford joining us right now on 105.3 The Fan. Daniel, obviously the NCAA tournament started yesterday. You had a, a good career at Arkansas. Derek Lively played one year last year at Duke. I want to know the difference from college basketball to pro basketball because it seems like to me, especially recently, that centers do better in the NBA than they do in their college career. And I know you had a very good college career uh, with your accomplishments, but Derek Lively seems to be better in the NBA than he was at Duke. And, and, and I think there's guys like that. Can you explain kind of the difference of being a big guy in college versus being a big guy in the NBA? I would say in all honesty, I think it depends on just like the situation at the college at the time because you got, you know, multiple guys that are at certain colleges. I'm pretty sure Duke was stacked when D-Live was there. So it's not necessarily just like how it was with me at Arkansas. Like we were stacked, but they were trying to push the narrative of just kind of like me being the face of the program at the time, my second year. Um, so it was just, it was just kind of like, I would say more of that in all honesty. Like you can have ways to, I would say, make an impact and just be legit in college and be legit the same way you did in college as you can do in the NBA. But I would say just like I said, it would just be kind of like situational, if that makes sense. But I don't know. You know, with me in my career, you know, I just kind of like did the same thing that I did in college as I'm doing now, you know, set screens, get to the basket, rebound, have high energy, and just be, you know, that guy that does all the dirty work, you know. It doesn't matter anymore. You're in a great situation. You're making good money in the NBA. Were you surprised with what you were able to do in 2019 that you weren't a first-round pick? Um, I never really even thought about it. At the end of the day, like I was just, I was just grateful to be in a position that I was in. You know, my work got me to where I needed to be. Of course, it felt, you know, I could have came out my first year, in all honesty. But you know, I, I took what I, I took what I could get at the time. And I, you know, took that and ran with it. Of course, it's like my first year and a half. I felt like I took that for granted in Chicago. And there was a lot of adversity that hit throughout those, you know, that season and a half that I had with them. 
So once I got to Washington, it's just something that I had to just take. I had to put my next step forward, in all honesty, and just kind of lock in to just, you know, the different things that I had to do to be able to kind of be successful in this league. Now, last night was a blast, Daniel. Like, it was – watching that game was just so much fun. And I'm just kind of – I want to try and get a, a description of what it's like when you're seeing so many of your teammates dunk over and over. And also, like, that, that – that, that, you know, on this radio show, we know how to talk to each other without talking to each other. Going up for an alley-oop, yeah. <laughs> are you always expecting the ball's about to be in my hands? How do you know when to go? Like, what? explain all that for me if you can. Um, it's just being in the right spot at the right time in all honesty. You know, I'm a big man, so I got to run the floor. So being in that position, it's always just a rim run situation. So if a guy sees you and you, doesn't, you don't really have too many people around you, they're going to find you. And really just, you know, just picking the twos and just like my spots whenever Luke and Kyrie is doing their thing on the floor, any one of our guards on the floor in all honesty. And just staying down low and just being ready for anything, to be honest. You know, I, I can't I can't go up and handle the ball, you know, for the time that I'm in. So I just kind of just get into the seams. I try to wedge rebound. I just try to do all the little things that, you know, are not really paying attention to when it comes to the game um, in the league. In all honesty, just, you know, being down there, putting my hard hat on and just going to work. Yeah, and and obviously, I mean, I'd love to see the seven footer dribble up the court and everything. I would obviously love to see that. But I, 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 we do have to, we do have to work on something though. We we need the other guys to stop hitting you in the pelvic area, dude, because this is starting to get oh. the last two games now. You've gotten you've gotten some some shots. What's going on there? How do we get this to stop? What, what do we need to do to help you out? Uh, really, I think it would just be me having to sit down, but I, I don't think that's going to happen no time soon. <laughs> you know, it's a physical game. I know what comes with it. And at the end of the day, just like I take it as a sign of respect when it comes to guys, not necessarily kicking me in, you know, the private areas, but just in general. That's just, a weird you know, sign of respect. That's weird. a weird sign of respect. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird, that's, that's one of the weirder ones. But um, in all honesty, the one last night is just, you know, he was just trying to keep me off the glass. So, I mean, I can't really fault him for doing what he was assigned to do, you know, and he did his job, you know, to an extent. And I was, like, running full speed, and it just happened. So I really can't hold it against them because, like I said, I take it as a sign of respect because they're trying to keep me off the offensive glass or just in general just trying to run through me when they're trying to get a defensive rebound too. So at the end of the day, I just have to, like I said, put my hard hat on, be ready to, you know, always get hit by at least, you know, two box outs a game at the same time down the stretch, and I just have to keep having fun with this playing ball. You know, I just when, – whenever it comes to me getting hit, you know, I take that lick and I keep going. <laughs> After Kyrie made that unbelievable shot over Jokic, the left-hander, did you practice that at pra- – were you like, <laughs> I got to try this just to see <laughs> if there's any chance I can do this? And then also watching Kyrie and Luca at practice, is it fun watching them come up with creative shots? Oh, yeah, of course. It's fun just watching them see just, like, the things that they do on a day-to-day basis. I mean, Kyrie, he works on all his stuff every day. And you see Luca every day uh, throwing a bullet on at the backboard, making a backboard shot. And it's just something that, you know, it just amazes me on a day-to-day basis because it's so consistent. You never see them, like, miss more than maybe, like, five in a row at the end of the day. And then, no, I didn't really I – didn't, I didn't practice the left hand floater at all because, you know, my left hand is terrible. You know, you see me most of the time, I'm either dunking with my right or dunking with two hands. So every now and then I may shoot a left hand layup and stare at it, but that's it pretty much. You know, I, I, I leave that to Kyrie and Luca. <laughs> well, in the last 21 games, 15 and 6, third in offensive rating, 12th in defensive rating, and that's been moving on up. We appreciate how well this team has been playing. We appreciate you for jumping on with us and hope we can have you on again mm-hmm. soon. Yes, sir. Thank you guys for having me on.